Amsterdam Film Show. The Favourite comes out in Amsterdam from the 3rd of January. So what did our critic David Swatling think about The Favourite? Let's find out. If you want to start your new film year off with a bang, The Favourite has arrived in Dutch theatres, and it's certainly an interesting way to begin the year. Um, Yorgos Lanthimos is the Greek film director who's mostly known here in Europe, but has beginning to get more wide acclaim. I mean, after all, his first film, Dogtooth, was nominated for an Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film back in 2011. And his first film in English, The Lobster, got a lot of awards and interest, and lots of friends asked me to said I would really like it. But it sounded a little too euro auteur avant-garde for my taste. Same thing with his second, second English film, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. So... I'd heard of him, sort of, but the favorite intrigued me because it's a historical drama. Okay, before you go ho-hum, historical drama, uh, Yorgos Lanthimos has taken a very interesting take on costume drama, historical drama. As a matter of fact, he said he wanted to explode the genre and do something a little different with it. And what he's done is he's taken a rather unknown part of English history, the rule of Queen Anne, in the early 18th century. Now this was the end of the Restoration period, which I know about because it was my favorite period to study in theater history when I was in college. I love the plays from that period. Uh, she Stoops to Conquer, uh, The School for Scandal. They didn't so much reflect society, they made fun of it. They satirized the royals and the upper classes. Now, I think that's the take that Lanthimos has gone with for the favorite because Queen Anne, her, okay, there was the war with France was going on. Um, it was the beginning of the two-party system in England. But she was considered kind of a weak, sickly ruler because mostly things were being run by her best friend from childhood, uh, Lady Marlborough, Sarah, who actually was ruling the country through Queen Anne, or at least that's the way it's portrayed here. Because what this film does is it takes a little political, emotional, psychological triangle. Because into the Queen Anne and Lady Marlborough mix comes Abigail, a cousin of Lady Marlborough's, whose family has a reversal of fortune and she's forced into servitude. She, she's hired on as a scullery maid in the palace. But Abigail sees Sarah as a kind of role model to a way she can rise up again and suddenly there is a bitter little battle between these two women for the affections of Queen Anne. Yeah, it's like palace intrigue mixed with love story in the beginning of the 18th century. I mean, the, the three women in this film are fantastic and that's part of why the film succeeds so well. Olivia Colman plays Queen Anne. Now, if you don't know Olivia Colman, because here she's popular on BBC TV, um, Broadchurch, uh, The Night Manager, shows like that. But she is spectacular in this movie. I mean, there's a reason why she's one of the most popular actresses at the moment in terms of everybody wants to, to work with her. Um, Lady Marlborough, her childhood friend, is played by Rachel Weitz. And Abigail, the kind of upstart, is played by Emma Stone. So it's the dynamics between these three incredible actresses and very interesting women in terms of you know who's up, who's down, and who's crossing lines that they shouldn't be crossing. crossing. Um, the men, there are men in the film, but they're more like objects than anything else, which is true to the period because during the Restoration, it was the men who were really the peacocks who dressed up and, and you know, made a big show of what they looked like. And of course, that's part of the joy of watching this movie. It's absolutely sumptuous in the design and the costumes by Sandy Powell, who also did Mary Poppins Returns are absolutely incredible. I mean, the Restoration had some wild and wacky styles, but she has taken them all just that little bit further to make it uh, almost surreal sometimes. Which, okay, if there's a little problem with the movie sometimes, it's how bizarrely surreal it becomes. I mean, I'm not talking about uh, Queen Anne's collection of rabbits which inhabit her 
uh, living chambers or the duck races that uh, go on in the, in the palace or even scenes of bathing in hot chocolate. No, I'm talking about a little, a little more... It, it, there's, a, there's a kind of a way that it, the film is shot, you know, down long hallways and, and, you know, on a grand scale, intimate scenes in big rooms. It's every once in a while, it's kind of, and this is a problem with period drama, it slows down. I mean, I almost nodded off a couple times. So if that's not your thing, but I can highly recommend it just on the basis of the performances by Olivia Coleman, Rachel Weitz, and Emma Stone, and a very interesting take on history. Maybe not historically accurate, but that wasn't director Lanthimos' intention. What he wanted to do was make a really fascinating power struggle between these three incredibly interesting women, and forget historical accuracy, go for wit and dark, dark, dangerous twists in the plot. Um, if that sounds like your thing, that's a good way to begin the new year. Amsterdam Film Show. 